back on another Facebook Friday. Uh, you might notice our setup is a little bit different today. Um, we're here at Melissa's house um, in Maryland, and um, I don't actually know what town we're in. <laughs> I'm sorry. Boyd's Maryland. Boyd's Maryland. Yeah. Well, I just, for those of you who don't know what Boyd is, we're here at uh, Germantown, Maryland. So, so we're going to do our normal sound check here really quickly, and. Um, we don't have unsound checking people to uh, provide entertainment this week, so I guess uh, mm -hmm. we got to sound check and do entertainment all in one shot. Yep, we'll try. try. <laughs> We're also trying to uh, share the video, so excuse us for one yeah, second. Yeah, so apologies for our uh, our tardiness this evening. <laughs> um, we had a couple things going on here. Obviously, uh, <laughs> we had a couple of things. Uh, going on it's uh it's kevin's birthday tonight so shout out to kevin my and, husband's birthday yeah and thank you for letting me come and do your birthday party <laughs> and take over with facebook friday <laughs> so um and then uh i had a client meeting of course we had to box all the stuff up and move it and then reassemble the studio so we have just a couple of a uh, couple of unusual things going on today mm -hmm. so we're almost there um where am i what am i doing we're talking about the Grand Floridian tonight, by the way. Ooh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, hey, the sound check—it's working. It's working. <laughs> All right, I think we've got. Wait, this is really hard. Okay, let me turn it. <laughs> sound off. So I don't get confused. Yep. <laughs> minimize the video. Video is like left to do comments. Okay. Um. Oh, hi. Okay. Wait, I see comments. Oh, Ben usually does this. <laughs> <Okay>. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Amy. Hi, Leah. Hi, Leah. <laughs> um, so, uh, we have um. A fair amount of news for tonight. Not, um, I'd say it's a moderate news week. Yeah, and not uh, anything humongous. Where, yeah. yeah, we're probably gonna get to the resort pretty quickly, but right. Mm -hmm. So, at any rate, um, do you want to start with movie news? Sure. Okay. Uh, so I guess movie news this week, uh, for our uh, Star Wars fans, uh, the Han Solo movie uh, had a director change this week, so Ron Howard's taking over. Um, the two original directors had creative differences and <laughs> they have uh, <laughs> left the movie slash got uh, fired I mean, yeah maybe. I <laughs> uh, so uh, Ron Howard would be taking over which actually I think is a pretty good choice he's yeah. done some pretty good movies that I've actually liked in the past so I, I don't see it as a problem I'm sure some people who are in the Star Wars universe I mean, I'm okay with it, but I, I haven't yeah. actually run that by Ben yet because <laughs> it's, I've been out every night this week, so I've, I've seen Ben for like 10 minutes this week, so I, I hope he's watching. Hi, Ben. <laughs> this is what I look like in case you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's been my week. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what day is it? Is, right. it, is it Friday? <laughs> Um, trailers have dropped for Pixar's Coco movie, which mm -hmm. is um, coming out. That's the Thanksgiving-ish uh, mm -hmm. release uh, this year. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, um, they're kind of taking a spin on the, the Day of the Dead uh, kind of um, storyline. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember seeing that in like one of the earlier uh -huh. theater previews. Yeah, yeah so um, it's kind of a, a really nice, cool concept that they haven't done anything on yet before. So it's actually looks pretty nice. Um, there's a lot of famous voices on there, a lot of... Famous Latin actors, cool. um, so um, check it out. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's on Pixar sites, on Disney site. Uh, it's pretty much on Facebook if you uh, search through there. So right. um, um, check it out, and that'll be coming out in the fall because um, Cars Three just came out uh, a couple of weeks ago, which I right. think it was number which is one. number one at the box office. Yeah, it didn't do as well as the first one, but it was still number one in the box office for the summer. So I guess that's good. I know. Chase but do we know if it beat um, <clears throat> Wonder Woman or when Wonder Woman came out? I Wonder Woman came I out first, right? I think it did. Oh, really? But um, not by like, like it was like. By like a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. It was very <laughs> close, but it wasn't like a hundred million dollar opening weekend or anything right. like that for it. So, so yeah, you're in first place by barely. Yeah. And that's also because yeah. Wonder Woman's been out for like a month. Right. Ago. So um, my daughter saw it and she really liked it. Yeah. She already knows all the names of the new cars. Yeah. She's, the new she, cars. She, there's a balloon upstairs and she's, um. Pretty, uh, pretty excited about the balloon with all the Cars characters on it. So. She was naming all of them. Yeah. So, <laughs> you love that Disney marketing. They know how to market. So uh, the kids enjoy the movie. So. Yeah. And I think I. Oh, I think okay. in. oh, sorry. Evie joined. Yes, this is a LuLaRoe Randy, by the way. <laughs> it's a Disney LuLaRoe uh, Randy. Which so. one are you on? Which page are you watching from? Oh, on the. Uh, Family page. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm watching from my page. Okay, cool. Because so I see different. Comments. Yeah, I see different comments. Yeah, but uh, I can only see like two at a time, guys. So hi. 
Oh wait, no, I can see EB. Okay, sorry. Yeah, technical. Uh, no, we're still learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, but I guess the oh, that's a, I guess another news item. Oh yeah, uh, Lularoe. Uh, for people who are fans of that clothing, I've now partnered with Disney, and um, a lot of the consultants that sell the clothing have been getting the. Uh, Disney merchandise. Disney, yeah, yeah so, the merchandise over the last. Uh, so if you've years. been waiting for it since the announcement, because they announced it like about like two months ago almost, yeah. probably. And uh, if you've been waiting for it since the announcement, it's here. Yeah, so. and their uh, their first collection they released has uh, Minnie, Mickey, uh, Aurora, and Bambi. So it's like Thumper oh, and cool. Bambi. Oh. Um, I haven't seen too much of the Aurora or Thumper and Bambi. There's been a lot of Mickey and Minnie. Right. They so, probably released um, more of that. I would think. Yeah, but. Um, it's a two-year deal with them, uh, and so over the next two years, you're going to obviously be releasing more characters, and I'm sure they'll have crazy patterns. And, and every character will eventually, hopefully, be out. Crazy. That would be great. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be crazy ridiculous for my wallet, and my husband's going to kill me. I already told my um, friend who's a consultant to just write, congrats for winning the raffle <laughs> on the best. <laughs> Because my husband <laughs> thinks one more bag arrived. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I and might I, be out on the streets. <laughs> I, was just, I was just thinking, maybe we jumped in uh, too fast here, because is this your first Facebook Friday? No, no, no. Second. Did you come, you came up for one? I did. Yeah, okay. Friday. I'm sorry. Yeah, right after, like, Star Wars. Oh, that's right. Yes. 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 Right after, okay. Like, Star Wars. Okay. Movies, so. I was going to say, should we introduce more? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not here a lot of Fridays. Right. Because, unfortunately, with living so far away from where the base of operations happens, um, the, this is kind of a, a rare treat, so... Mm -hmm. Lucky that I had a had a client down here this afternoon, and I wasn't going to make it home in time. <laughs> so it just worked so out beautifully. Doing a mobile, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which ideally we were going to do all the time. That was our that was our first thought. We'll go like on location somewhere like Disney related. Yeah. But that just didn't really pan out. It's too hard to control the environment. So yeah, this, exactly. This better. So. Yep. Um, in parks news, mm -hmm. uh, Disneyland Fast Pass service. We uh, talked about a couple, actually probably three months ago. Um, that Disneyland is initiating a Max Pass service, uh, which will combine a Fast Pass uh, ability to schedule your Fast Passes on a mobile app, plus Photo Pass, and uh, for one day, uh, it's ten dollars per person. Mm -hmm. So they're actually starting to take the first steps uh, this week with that, and um, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the first step is that instead of scanning your Fast Pass um, ticket when you come back, you'll scan your theme park ticket. So, not sure how long that puts the actual unveiling of MaxPass, how far away mm -hmm. it is, but they're, they are actually starting to roll out phases of what it'll be like. So, Yeah, um, and if for those of you who have yet to go to Disneyland and who have been to Disney World before, uh, they don't have the magic, magic bands at Disneyland. So, yes, <laughs> it's very much <laughs> how it was at Disney World, like, four or five right. years ago. And it's very strange. Like, if you, Even if you were a frequent Disney World visitor before Magic Bands, you don't realize how dependent you've become on them until you go to Disneyland and you're like... You go to pay for something. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, you should definitely take a trip, but I don't think Magic Bands are coming anytime soon for Disneyland, so it'll continue to be a very different experience on each coast. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, 2018. Well, now you can reserve. All the packages were released, uh, yesterday. No, Wednesday. Up through November. It's probably out to, like, November 3rd now, but, um, yeah. you can reserve anything up to 499 days out as a package for 2018. Yeah, and, uh, and with all that rolled out, we also rolled out the new dining plans for 2018, and then now include alcohol for those parents that Woo! enjoy uh, <laughs> a fruity drink every once in a while. You might need a fruity drink if you've been at this with your kids before. <laughs> and, um, when we were talking about this over dinner, when you purchase the dining plan for um, older children in your group, if they're 10 years old or up, you have to pay the adult plan price for them. And of course, the fact that they now offer the alcohol and the specialty milkshakes and everything is factored in. So what, what we're wondering is, can you mm -hmm. um, steal drinks from your child and can they be alcoholic if you're the one who's going to consume them? Or if your child is using the credit, do they have to get a milkshake? Um, we don't have an answer on that yet, but that was just part of our like, speculation. Like, how is this logistically going to work with the 21 and older requirement? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it didn't really say like right off the bat if there was a difference. I don't. Oh yeah, I don't. just more people. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Yep. Um, so speaking of food uh, type things, mm, uh, so Pop Century is uh, in the process of getting uh, renovated. 
Um, a lot of the renovated rooms are now available. And, uh, and a lot of feedback goes directions on that. A lot of people are loving yeah, it. Yeah, some people, people loving it. Yeah, some <laughs> people love the, the new modern kind of look and feel. Some people right. think it's very sterile, like kind of like hospital roomy like. And um, I believe the, um, instead of having just two regular double beds, the one is fold down now. Correct. Right? So, so, yeah, so they have a regular double bed and then they have a Murphy bed, mm-hmm. similar to the Art of Animation Family Suites. Right. How they have like a little dining table that's actually a Murphy bed. It's the same. Basically the same exact one, except with a different um, right. look and feel. It looks like this door behind me, like this kind of wood. Wow, it's um, good thing we have the door there. <laughs> Super helpful. It looks like that door, and it looks like a table. And then um, if you need it, you pull it down in the evenings. Um, and with that, they've introduced not just like the renovated rooms, but now they have a nicer uh, in-room food service menu with like fried chicken and wings and yeah uh, spaghetti Pass, uh, alcohol too yeah. uh, different things like that so if you're too tired coming back from the parks in the evening and you don't want to track it depending on where your room is at the resort back to the food court area now you have um, some better food options for in-room right. dining other than pizza delivery. now one thing have you done in-room dining at other resorts i've only done pizza delivery okay mm-hmm. we did the ohana feast and the feast itself was excellent i mean it was it was really awesome that they brought like basically exactly what they serve um at ohana to our room it was wonderful oh i think i saw your but yeah. by this time they got it to us it had chilled off a little bit so we were fortunate we were in a room with a microwave if there was something that really bothered you you could pop it in the microwave but you don't have that option at pop so Oh, I'm true. wondering, like, by the time your fried chicken gets to your room, is oh, it yeah. still going to be hot? Is it, you know, is it going to be enjoyable to eat something like that's that substantial? True. And, and I don't know. We'll just have to experiment. So if anybody wants to um, bite the bullet on that and go to Pop Century and know. check out the inner dining, <laughs> give us some feedback on it, and we'll report it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. um, I'm going to skip one bullet for a minute, okay? Because uh, there's uh, rumors about Epcot. Uh, this week, uh, there's some expansion plans oh, yes. uh, submitted by Disney. Um, so there's some rumors of some new rides coming, like a Ratatouille ride to France and um, to Epcot France, not Disneyland Paris. Correct. I was very confused about that <laughs> earlier. <laughs> not Disneyland Paris. Yeah. Um, so they're trying to. I think um, the which actually I think is a good thing because Epcot's kind of been a little stale for right. a few years. Yeah, I think now. it can use it could use a little little boost. Um, yeah, like El- like Ellen's energy thing is still it's like about fifteen years old, and um, they don't really use. Uh, I was actually you mean you mean Ellen's sleepy time adventure? Yeah, yeah. It's like an hour long ride. Really. It's forty minutes, but yeah. it's like it's the best air conditioned nap you can get at Disney World. It's just the longest span where they'll let you sit in the air conditioning and not disturb you. But you know they have that pavilion next to it that way back when, if you were a nineties kid, uh, had body body stuff. wars, body wars, wars the best. <laughs> you know, shrieking into some into this little thing, going to a human body. To try to find it was those. really cool. Yeah, it was kind of cool. Uh, but that building has never hasn't been used in a while. They only use it now during expos, like for right. wine and, and things. Not like that. only that, but like Festival of the Arts, they didn't even put the Festival Center in the Wonders of Life Pavilion. They put oh. it in the um, Odyssey Building. So Wonders of Life is still sitting vacant. I'm like, please do something yeah. with the pavilion. Even like that little uh, where the first aid station is, that yeah. Epcot, like in between, um, like in dimensions, and then like oh, the yeah. showcase. Like, that used to be a restaurant, and that had right. not been a restaurant for many years. It's yeah. just a building that's there with the first aid station and the, uh, the baby center. If anybody needs it, that's where it is. But, um, you know, Which is lovely, but... It is, yeah, yeah. but you kind of just like walk You could probably it. condense that into a smaller mm-hmm. space and bring back the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah, Yeah. so I, I think this is a good thing. That yeah, definitely. It, especially now with um, Hollywood Studios. When we were looking at the... Um, the extent of the permits, it looks like they're working on the backstage areas and some canals that are near the park, so uh, making some parking adjustments, which possibly brings in more real estate to use mm-hmm. if some of the current um, parking area or tour curl parking area can be meshed into the park, mm-hmm. uh, or cleaning up the parking area so that there's more of it for an eventual expansion so that when more people come, because Epcot's now better, Mm-hmm. It will be able to handle the crowds. So, um, so a lot of different things going on in the background there. Um, not really any news of attractions or um, really fun things yet, but all of that infrastructure is super, super important to make sure that when they do finally do something new with Epcot, that mm-hmm. you can actually use it <laughs> and you aren't you know, wanting to beat yourself over the head because of the lines. So. Oh, no, Howard said the feast is awesome. It is yeah, awesome. It, the Ohana feast, yeah, it's, it's great. Mm-hmm. We, we shared it with them. <laughs> I, went, I think we, I went there, uh, I think it was before uh, my wedding. We drove down and did like a little mini Disney trip. Oh. We drove down. 
to South Florida for our wedding. So, of course, if you're driving, you're like, well, Orlando's right it's there. It's right there. So, <laughs> we're going to as well just stop. So, we did that, and we did the um, uh, beers around the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fun times. So, <laughs> right. Um, uh, so, let's see. Oh, another thing. In is, Epcot. Yes. Yep. Um, so, another thing that's great that's now available. Well, the water parks are open now. Uh, through Labor Day, the photo pass. So if you added photo pass to your vacation package, um, all the photo pass photographers are now at Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach. So again, you don't have to worry about taking your camera to a water park, um, which is really awesome. And you can leave your phone in the lockers while you're uh, swimming. You can, because your magic band's waterproof. Yeah, fantastic. You can wear your magic band <laughs> everywhere, and then the photo pass guys are there to take photos. So if you don't mind having photos of yourself in your bathing suit all wet, <laughs> be on rides. <laughs> They're there for the, the, or those. Or maybe get photos of your kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or someone else's kids. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those are uh, they're now there until Labor Day, and then I think after Labor Day they kind of go on um, like a different schedule because uh, it's fall, uh, winter time. Right. Even though and they'll, they'll shut down one park at a time over the winter too. So yeah. both water parks aren't operational mm-hmm. twelve months a year. So if that is something you want to do. Um, just make sure to check in, in advance, uh, like the time of year that you're going to see which of the water parks are going to be open and or if both are going to be open because it might be a decision as to whether you want to add the water park and more to your right. ticket. So I would say from I think October, it, it sticks in my head like October 3rd, they shut down mm-hmm. the first one. So it yeah. was October, November, December, one is shut down, and then January, February, March, the second one shut down. So if you're between April and the end of, beginning of April and of September, mm-hmm. You should have access to both water parks. Um, other times of the year, I would consider maybe just doing um, doing a gate admission, which is like fifty four dollars, I think, for adults, and yeah, less than that for kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, let's see, <clears throat> one other. Oh, we have two other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's do the. Well, I'll do the two thousand days in a row thing because that that was crazy. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys saw on the news. There's this guy. This guy <laughs> named Jeff Wright from Huntington Beach, California, has been to Disneyland. Every day for the last 2,000 days. I think at this point it's probably 2,003 days. Right. Because the story is wrong earlier this week. Right. And I don't think he had any intention of stopping. I think he was mm-hmm. uh, planning to continue his no. streak. No. And we were talking about this at dinner. Yeah. How is this even possible? Because, like, like, does this guy never get sick? Does he not, like, have a day where he had to work really late and just wants to go home? Um, does he never go on vacation? I mean, because we're talking, what did we figure out? It's like six years or something that he's gone to the park every single day. Every single day. I can't even understand. No. And it's not even like (laughs) 2,000 weekdays. I mean, what they said was 2,000 days in a row. Yeah. And I thought there there was a couple last year or maybe the year before that had gone for every day of their annual pass. So they went 365 days. Right. But, like, to make that commitment for a year, I can see. But six years? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I'm sorry. Even if I, I mean, and he lives in Huntington Beach, right? And it's in Anaheim. Yeah. So it's not even like his house is around the corner. No. <laughs> and I've been there before, and I've driven like on the highway. Like I'm just like, how do you even? I, I don't even know. It, I, maybe he just goes for like. Maybe he stops him on the way to work. Yeah. Or it's magic hours or something. Or, yeah, I'm not really <laughs> sure. Because even if I live in Orlando. Wait, does he work for Disney? <laughs> I didn't read the article. I don't think he's in. <laughs> I think they would have mentioned it, but I don't think he did work for Disney, which actually would make... Oh, here we go. Five and a I mean, half years. Thanks, Jeff. How many... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many um, How many games did Cal Ripken play in a row? So, like... It was around, like, 21. 21, 31, right? Yeah. 21, 31 was the, str- was the record, and he broke it. I don't, I don't know how yeah. many. So, I mean, this guy's pretty close to, like, breaking Cal Ripken's Iron Man streak on Disneyland park days. And Cal Ripken had off days. Because they don't play baseball yeah, games. Yeah, that's day. true. <laughs> so, <laughs> and off months. Yes. <laughs> Where he yeah. can, you know, see his family. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. It's a, a little crazy. I mean, yeah. I mean to each their great own. Job, great job. I mean, uh, I mean, we love Disney. I don't think I could do it, though. Yeah, Honestly, like 2,000 in a row, I don't think I could do it. I don't, I mean, I don't even know if he's married. Is he married? Like, I feel like your no. spouse would, like, be he's super not. angry. He's <laughs> not. <laughs> just, he's not. <laughs> You're like, what are you doing? Oh, wait, you're there again. You're right. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, <laughs> we also have announcements for uh, concerts mm-hmm. for each of the Beat concert series during Food and Wine this year. Mm-hmm. And I guess we'll just talk about the people who are new. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, a couple of, uh, well, there's, I mean, there's acts every day from right. August 31st through November 11th. So, I mean, there's 
depending on where when you're going, you can see actually multiple acts. Like if you're going to be there a whole week, you can actually see up to three. Uh, and while you're there, because they only run about two or three days a piece, so yeah. it's pretty easy to overlap and double up. Yeah, a lot of them are very like '90s or '80s, which actually yes. kind of fun to do. <laughs> uh, oh, there you go, Jeff. Two thousand six hundred and thirty-two games. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Well, wow. I stopped counting something. after the streak was broken. Yeah. Holy cow, we won another five hundred games. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Good job, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. We have Baja Men. You know who let the dogs out? If you're really into that song. They're going to be there Labor Day weekend. I'll let the dogs out. Yeah. <laughs> um, Starship, Plain White Plain Tees. Tees. See, which... they haven't listed as new because they are they're they were there last year. No, no, I just highlighted Oh, you just highlighted the ones that... Okay. Melissa's <laughs> 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 like getting her wish list together yeah. for the ball. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, they were there. I think David Cook was actually there, too. David Cook was And Ever Everclear Everclear was And Sugar Ray. Yeah. And they're going to be there again this year. Um, Boys to Men is going to be there again this year. They were there last Yay. year. Um... Taylor for, Dane, we think, is new. Mm -hmm. Oh, 10,000 Maniacs, yes. Yes, 10,000 Maniacs. Mm -hmm. um, Taylor Dane, I, I, I think, is new. Yeah, I don't think Taylor Dane. Yeah, I don't also remember Kenny seeing G. her on the list. Yeah. Kenny, it says new. Here we go. New is Kenny G. Um, Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany. Mark Wills is new. Well, it's Devin Mark Alden. Wills? Yes. Oh, I missed that one. Sweet. October 1st. And, um, well, I won't be there October 1st. That's a bummer. Okay. Jukebox um, <laughs> is a new one. Yeah, Kenny G's new. Oh, 10,000 uh, Maniacs. If you're there minutes. for the Wine and Dine half marathon like I will be, uh, you will be uh, serenaded by Hanson. <laughs> We're going to get up while uh, 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 I'm running. I'm probably going to tell it to my See, running. You know what? I was thinking about coming down and running with you guys, but now no. Absolutely. Who's, and then Blue October <laughs> is also that weekend, so I guess you can... Get a little bit, and then uh, Boys to Men is the weekend before the end, uh, or the yeah, the few days before the last one. Um, so there's quite Hansen's a few. Hanson's a staple. Um, no, no, Hanson is not a staple. They need to stop. You know, if it was back to you, I'd be there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I can't back for that. Actually, uh, if you what happens to 90 days, degrees? Are they still together? No, but if you're in the Washington D.C. area uh, this Sunday, a uh, the New Kids on the Block will be here with oh. Paula Abdul and Boys to Men. What? They're playing this Sunday. Wow. Rising Center. Well, and actually, I mean, part of the reason... And it's not sold out, guys. You want more tickets. Part of the reason <laughs> our, our viewership could be down a little bit tonight is because Luke Bryan's playing at Hershey Park. So that's... There we uh, go. Yeah. I was, I was seeing it pop up on my Facebook feed all day today. People were going to Luke Bryan. I was like... Oh. Tell me, this is the concert going on this summer. I think you too was just here, too. Yes. Actually, I was... A couple days ago. Yeah. I mm -hmm. uh, met with a friend the morning after she was at the concert. Mm -hmm. And I, I was shocked. She looked amazing. I was like, you were just up all night at the YouTube concert? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. How are you functioning? <laughs> yeah. There's some good concerts going on. Yeah. And it, I actually, I think it's great that you have all these concerts, and they are included with your admission to Epcot. So right. So if you happen to be at Epcot um, this fall during Food and Wine. Which is really fantastic. Think yeah. about it. Like, what's a concert ticket anymore? Like, 100 bucks. Okay, so 100 bucks for a concert yeah. ticket. It's like $119 for a single-day admission to Epcot. So for 20 extra dollars, you can, like, go hop on Soar and hop on Test Track eat at some food booths mm -hmm. and um, you know maybe go see Figment I mean yeah that's a great value yeah and if you you know you have your kids with you they have that great character spot there that's yeah. one of my favorite character spots by the way at Epcot oh it's raining on the Luke Bryan concert oh, no. oh that's sad I'm it's sorry. not raining in my life <laughs> <laughs> nope it wasn't really it was supposed to rain it was yeah um, uh, let's see what else oh do we have other new oh my gosh wow we were uh, okay Melissa was really industrious about news today oh there's just one more news uh, the, if you're into stamps, stamps oh, yeah, like the villain, post the office, uh, the Disney villain stamps are coming in July. Uh, so they're releasing a, a whole new series of stamps with um, various villains, including the evil stepmother and Maleficent. They look pretty cool. Ursula, there's, yeah, they're really there's nice. There's 10 of them? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're into stamp collecting, that's coming. Um, it's not really into pins, unfortunately. I don't know maybe, they'll make, <gasps> maybe they'll make pins of the stamps. They might. <laughs> yeah. They probably will. They probably will do that. I'm excited about it. Ben might not be that excited. Ben will be excited. <laughs> he gets he gets pretty excited about pins. Oh really? If I well, start if I start collecting anything, yeah. like, I'm gonna get. I'm telling you, this Lula Rose thing. If I get one more th collection going on, I yeah. might get kicked out of this house. You might. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're collecting, I'll buy you stamps. If you're collecting pins, you can come live with me. I can. I can. We, buy, can, we can merge our collections for I awesome. I can buy you stamps. <laughs> So just let me know what stamps you need, <laughs> and that would be my hobby while I'm <laughs> hobby not hobby. That's awesome. <laughs> so we're moving on to Grand Floridian. Yep. So yeah, this is the flagship resort mm -hmm. of Walt Disney World. 
Um, it is the last resort, and we saved it for last because it, it is the flagship. We thought it deserved its uh, place of honor at the end. Um, it's large. <laughs> it's, it is. Uh, it actually has uh, 800, only 842 rooms, 25 suites, and 147 villas. Um, and it's a DVC resort, too. So if you're in the Disney vacation, than that. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess, when, yeah, because when they added the, the villas. And that's probably why, because of the villa buildings. But yeah. It's it's a little spread out for a deluxe, honestly. Um, not not as much so as, you know, Port Orleans, Riverside, and Alligator Bayou. I mean, it's, we're not talking, you know, that kind of spread out. But when you compare it to the Contemporary, which has the A-frame building and a couple of garden buildings, and they're Correct. all right there, yeah. um, this is definitely much more spread out. Mm -hmm. um, um, so they have a... Well, it's, I, I don't know if, if you've never seen there, out of the deluxe resort, I feel like all the deluxe resort have similar lobbies. It's kind of like you walk in and they're very yeah. grand. Right, yeah, um, and they want that, that kind of yeah. ambiance. They want you to feel like, wow, this is an amazing place I've walked into. Mm -hmm. And it is, and I'm not trying, I don't, I don't mean to say that in a way that's, <laughs> like, that yeah. they're just this trying to is, con yeah. you. And but. this one is very, like, Victorian, and mm -hmm. so it's very formal. Like, compared to a lot of the other Disney resorts, the deluxe resort in general aren't very, like, uh, like the values or some of the marmots were very highly themed, like right. with characters and things like that. And they are highly themed, but the themes are more subtle. They're more... Right. So this is Victorian style, so right. it's very Victorian. And right. you can have tea there, and um, uh, the chandeliers are, I think, what was it? Two stories tall. Two stories tall. Yeah. So it's a five-story lobby area with these two giant chandeliers that are 16 feet high each, 14 feet wide, and they have 44 candelabras each in there. Um, and it's, it's very, I don't know, it's a little too formal for me for a Disney vacation, Yeah. but it's, I mean, it's really, it's beautiful. And especially during the holidays too. If you, if you just want to go resort hopping during the holidays, if you're not actually staying there. The Christmas tree is gorgeous. Yeah. I have no idea how they get it in there and how they decorate it. I mean, they, they probably lose people off of the ladders. <laughs> I, I, there must be, there must be fatalities associated <laughs> with that Christmas tree. Um, it's, it's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Um, and the gingerbread house, the, the Grand Floridian was the first place that the, the holiday gingerbread houses started. So, of course, they really try to outdo all the other resorts and, mm -hmm. and make their house special. Um, they do use basically the same structure every year, but it's, it's literally a gingerbread house that people can stand inside of to sell you gingerbread mm -hmm. items. It's, okay. <laughs> and Jeff noticed it's like southern style shoreline, turn of the century. Mm -hmm. It actually also reminds me of that hotel. It's in San Diego, that Coronado like the non, it's not a Wait, Disney one. It's like the famous hotel. It's company. modeled off of it. Yeah. Or vice versa. One of them is modeled <laughs> off of the other. Yeah. It's probably the probably Grand Floridian is modeled off yeah. of Coronado. Yeah. Because yeah, that hotel has very similar steeple on uh, the front, like a very big red kind right. of steeple at the top, and um, it's like right on the shoreline, mm -hmm. and they have like a very, it's you know, it's like a beach hotel in California, and so it has kind of like a similar looking feel, at least from the outside. Uh, very much so. So if you've ever seen any movies, because I think that hotel in California is haunted, so they always have specials about it during Halloween. <laughs> Grand Floridian, not so much. But, right. uh, <laughs> no, haunted that is. No, exactly. So far. So far. Right. Uh, but there is a shoreline there, so you, there are water activities that you can do at that hotel. Um, so it's very, you know, it's on the loop. It's on, on the monorail, monorail loop. Um, it's, now, um, even though it's right next to Magic Kingdom, the, the canal does go through to fill uh, Seven Seas Lagoon. So you can't walk from Grand Floridian to Magic Kingdom the way you can from the Contemporary. Uh, you do lose that amenity, but it is, mm -hmm. uh, if you're taking the monorail, um, Grand Floridian is uh, the close, excuse me, closest to Magic Kingdom. Yep. Um, oh, one of the things I like about it, because um, I'm not going to lie, Mary Poppins is my favorite movie. I love Mary Poppins. So they have a fountain there. A Mary Poppins they fountain. They do. Mm -hmm. It's very lovely. They also have inside some of, at least in the villas, they mm -hmm. have um, Mary Poppins decor. Oh, um, it's it's subtle. It's not mm -hmm. you know. There's not like a Mary Poppins statue in the corner or anything, but you know, like um, silhouettes on the walls. Um, and they also have some nods to The Happiest Millionaire, which is kind of like the forgotten movie of the '60s. <laughs> so, and that's yeah, one of my favorites. I've never seen so, that. Yeah. Um, Add it to the list. Right. So it's kind of weird. And, and they have some Alice in Wonderland theming. Um, the the pool, the splash and play area for the kids has um, hats and teacups and things from the Man Tea Party. Speaking of that. Howard mentioned tea service. Tea service. We'll get back to tea service in a yeah, second. Yeah, we're going to talk about that kind of in depth. Um, and um, what was the other? Oh, Cinderella is the other influence. So it, uh, if you look down in the tile work in the floor, you'll see that they actually, like they're 
off-white marble tiles, and then they have green marble tiles cut out in the shapes of characters. So oh, cool. it's everybody from Minnie and Mickey to Daisy, and, and they have the characters from Cinderella, uh, in addition to like the classic animated characters. Uh, in the carpet, when you walk up the steps from the Grand Lobby, uh, there's a, a Cinderella's coach is actually oh. patterned into the carpet. And not like, so, oh, there are some circles that look like they might be Cinderella's coach. <laughs> I mean, like, legit Cinderella's <laughs> coach is in the carpet. That's awesome. Yeah, so they have they have some really cool, like... <laughs> what? 90s kids for life. Yeah, like, <laughs> the best thing about Grand Floridian is that when that's where <laughs> Phil, Full House filmed their Disney World episode. <laughs> <laughs> so that was actually a really good episode of Full House. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess moving to the tea service, mm-hmm. uh, there are three different options for tea because I mean, if you're going to have a resort that's got some Alice in Wonderland theming and some Mary Poppins theming, you better have some tea. <laughs> so they've handled that quite nicely. Um, there is the in the Garden View Tea Room. There's the Perfectly Princess Tea Party, and that is for children under a certain age. I want to say it's twelve. Yes, they're under four. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in the afternoon, they have a tea service for, uh, I mean, for adults, but for everybody. Um, and that's uh, just the Garden View Tea Room. It's available mm-hmm. as an advanced dining reservation. And I believe the hours on that are like two to four, somewhere in that neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we've actually done the Garden View Tea Room service. Um, it was a very nice atmosphere. There were some very uh, nice touches uh, as far as like, uh, the, the whipped cream on top of the desserts uh, it was a white whipped cream and then Grand Floridian etched mm-hmm. in either chocolate or strawberry within the whipped cream. Um, they had uh, they didn't have any soups in the in the menu, but they did have a cheese plate. They had finger sandwiches uh, and then of course tea. Um, I thought for the cost of the tea, honestly, it was it was something that'll be a one and done for me. Um, we go to a tea room locally that is about twenty five dollars a person. Um, and they have a sandwich course, a soup course, a scone course, a cake course, and a salad. <laughs> so we get a five course meal okay. for 25 bucks. Wow. No, I mean, it's five course meal because, yeah. you know, it's the sandwiches are this mm-hmm. big and you get two of them. Um, but it's enough to fill you up and it's unlimited tea. Well, tea at the Grand Floridian ran us $107, <laughs> including gratuity. And we didn't have soup. <laughs> I don't remember there being a salad. And, um... You actually had to pay if you wanted additional pots of tea. <laughs> I'm at a tea okay. service. <laughs> Why is the tea not unlimited? It costs you four cents yeah. to make. <laughs> Please bring tea. Where so, was this tea from? I don't know. They must have imported it from yeah. Mars because <laughs> it's like, really? There was $3 a pot extra? <laughs> like, I'm already paying you $100 for tea. That doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. So I, I will say as an experience at Grand Floridian, it was it was a cool thing to do like one time, but honestly, my experience was diminished when they brought the bill. I, like, I, it, it was the kind of thing that was like, wow, real, like, really? <laughs> well, that's how I feel every time we go to a character experience. Oh. Gosh, my daughter eats zero food. <laughs> and you still have to pay the full amount, even if they don't eat any food. Yeah. So you're like paying for character fast passes? Pretty much. Wow. Pretty much. But that's fine. And they say fast pass is free, it's a thing. I know. <laughs> lies. <laughs> Billy lies. I know. <laughs> well, so. it's one of those things where actually the character experience is um, uh, if you don't want to stand in line or use the fast passes for those because you want to use the fast passes for rides. It makes sense to do a dining experience. Absolutely. Because you will get one-on-one attention with the characters. They go to every table. And especially every if you're one. going to one that's yeah. like five characters. Well, even if it costs you $50, would you have paid $10 to bypass lines for, for, five, for those five characters? Yeah. If the answer is yes, then your food was free. Exactly. So I, I kind of look at it that way, and, I, and mm-hmm. I've been pretty happy with character dining as a, as yeah. a whole. And I, I guess we can see Except it. for next week's episode, which we'll talk about when I was not very pleased with <laughs> <laughs> But that's next week. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> that's not this resort. <laughs> um, so um, I guess we can see so the dining, I guess. Right, continuing on tea, yeah. there's also the, um, oh gosh. The Mad Tea Party? Mad Tea. It's what, uh, Alice in Wonderland? Alice in, um, Wait, oh, I lost it. Uh, it's at 1900 Park Fair. Yes. <laughs> it's what they fill their afternoon with because they only serve breakfast Wonderland and dinner. Tea party. Wonderland Tea Party. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is also yeah. children yeah. exploring right? 4 to 12. 12. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so Wonderland Tea Party is at 1900 versus the Princess Tea Party, which is at the Garden View Tea Room. Mm-hmm. Um, also at 1900 Park Fair. Oh, and Alice and the Mad Hatter are at the Wonderland yes. Tea Party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Alice and the Mad Hatter are also at breakfast at 1900 Park Fair, along with Mary Poppins, Winnie the Pooh, and Tigger. Um, unless that's changed since the last time I ate there, but I don't think so. I don't I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's still consistent. Um, breakfast at 1900 Park Fair is probably one of my favorite character meals if you're not on the dining plan because it's one of the least expensive and it has such a great is variety that the of characters. Super califragilistic breakfast. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's got a great variety of characters because you've got Alice in Wonderland plus Mary Poppins plus Winnie the Pooh, oh. all at the same meal. I did not know that. And they have a strawberry soup there that is. Fantastic. Okay. It's like my favorite thing. We got two more Disney trips coming this year. Yeah. I'm you need to get 1900 on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, they have the standard things like Mickey Waffles. They have like Eggs Benedict, um, Omelette Station. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty, pretty good breakfast. Nice. Um, I, I pretty much I enjoy it. And I'm not really a, be- a breakfast person, so if I enjoyed it, like there's got to be something for you there. Yeah. Um, and then dinner at 1900 Park Fair is the happily ever after. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. The Cinderella one. Yeah. <laughs> um, which features Cinderella's entourage. It's uh, Cinderella, Lady Tremaine, Prince Charming, uh, one of the only places, well, that's changed now a little bit, but mm-hmm. one of the few places that you can meet a Disney prince. Prince, yeah. Um, and the stepsisters. Oh, and them. Yeah. yeah. I don't believe them. I don't think that the mice are there. Oh, Gus. He's yeah. my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the mouse's name with the pink bonnet? Um, Oh, the girl. I forget. The girl mouse. <laughs> the girl mouse. <laughs> Who claims that uh, that you should leave the sewing to the, the women. women. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that mouse. Sewing to the women. You go get the trim. That line. Oh, yeah. Amy says there's no way. <laughs> oh. Maybe yeah. make there be mice. <laughs> make, it, make it happen. <laughs> No, but it is pretty cool. The stepsisters are also um, pretty hilarious. Yeah, they're great. And they're not in the park anymore to any great extent. Like, I've seen them wandering around, uh, them, but they're, they're in... Their normal meet and greet, I think, is, has been canceled. No, because now they roam, and they are at... Uh, the last few times I've been there, they have them at Magic Kingdom, in right behind the carousel. Yeah, the we carousel. rode the carousel, like, right behind them. They were riding with some children yeah. one time. I was like, oh, I want to ride the carousel with the stepsisters. I know. <laughs> Aladdin and Jasmine were on the uh, carpet. Like, two groups ahead of us and then they got off and we're like no because <laughs> people got a bunch of pictures of like you know selfies with them on the back That's of cool. the carpet oh sometimes fairy godmother yeah. instead of lady tremaine yeah so the fairy i've seen a lady tremaine and the stepsisters and fairy godmother in that little um space between the carousel and bell's story right book, but you mean saying at um oh, at, at uh, 1900 oh they switch it that out they're, yeah that sometimes uh fairy godmother's there oh cool yeah i mean she's cool but like yeah. i think lady tremaine like She's the like villains are always more fun to meet because their their personalities are more multi dimensional. Yeah. Like they're they're they have more things to talk about. Yeah, I think one of the stepsisters actually told Chase that she should be a gold digger when she grows up. <laughs> oh my god. It was so awesome. It was awesome. I said, Chase, what do you want to be when you grow up? She goes, I don't know. And then Anastasia goes, A gold digger? It was great. I have that on video. <laughs> um Oh wow. Um, Old school CRT was only fairy godmother and mice, no princesses except downstairs photo with Cinderella. Hmm. Leah, what year was that? Yeah. Do you remember? Because, oh, and strawberry soup was also at dinner at 1900. Thank you. Um, because uh, 2003, Ben and I did um, Cinderella's Royal Table, and we had, I want to say it was like Cinderella and Snow White. I don't even, I think it was only two princesses. Oh, wow. And it was very rushed and not, like, it was kind of a, it, it was a weird day. It was New Year's Eve, and it was uh, just, they were probably having the entire day. Table, everything yeah. was chaos. So. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, and and Jeff mentioned that the cost includes the photo includes package. Includes photo package. That's at Cinderella's Royal Table. Yeah. The cost includes photo package. Um, um, and then speaking of the resort, because it's deluxe, you do and, and this hotel just has so many options for dining. I mean, you have all these. Right, we're only on like the second one. <laughs> I know, and these, and these are all like character experiences. So you can have non-character experiences. Right. There's a million other things to eat right. there. <laughs> Which is, I mean, it's great. So, um, there's the save B and A for for the end. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So there's, uh, let me see. Signature dining. Signature dining. Yeah. Uh, so they have two, actually three, but but two like yeah. regular signature dining restaurants, uh, Citricos mm-hmm. and Narcosis. Um, Narcosis is really cool location wise because it's down on the water in um, like a. Uh, not a bungalow, gazebo. A gazebo, yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, sea, because you're by the water. Right. So it's like seafood and steak. Um, 
So nice views of the train station. And yeah, and then if you're there. there at night, you get to see that little electrical Oh, right, magic. while you're eating dinner. Yeah, so, so. That's, that's fun if you're like there with the kids and things like that. So, um, so great then, for ambiance. Mm-hmm. And then I guess Citricos, um, it's like Floridian flavored uh, types of foods. Herbs so lots that. of oranges. Lots of oranges. Yeah, <laughs> lemon, uh, citrusy kind of like marinades. Lemon. The... Yeah. What? Orange. Oh, it's oranges. Is there lemon? Mm-hmm. Are there lemons? Yeah. Wow. In the food, like <laughs> it's very so it's very traditional to see a lot of people in South Florida squeeze lemon on, on top of their steak. Hey, I do that. Yeah. I'm Floridian. Yeah. I'm moving. <laughs> You're moving. <laughs> I know where to go. Um, and then they also have. Um, uh, a couple, of, well, like for example, the Gasparilla Island Grill, it's a, it's a quick service. And that one's nice because it's 24 hours. So if you get like a hungry and a three in the morning for something, right. you got a place to go. And that's actually um, the only, is that the only resort that has a 24 hour quick service? I would, yeah. Because even the Valley Resorts. Think of it, yeah, I can't think of any. Yeah, the Valley Resorts, they don't, they close yeah. at 11. Yeah. Um, I definitely come back from the parks and be like, man, I'm hungry. And <laughs> only to find the Valley Resort. Restaurant closed. Oh, machine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can't think of another deluxe that has, unless Captain Cook's is possibly 24 hours, a Polynesian. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. Citric Coast is not good enough love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then there's also um, the Grand Floridian Cafe, um, which is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, and it's just like American food. Um, and it's like casual American dining. Right. So some of the other restaurants are a little bit more. Fun. They actually have dress codes at the. At the. At are the they? In, they're not very enforced at the. Um, Coasties and Citra Coast. They're like resort casual. Resort thing. casual. Right. Yeah. Um, which so is like, like, no, like no, no bathing suits. No bathing like, suits yeah. or tank tops. I mean, right. so the dress code's not like super super strict. Yeah. Except for Victorian Alberts, uh, where I believe it is dresses for ladies and jackets for gentlemen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but. From what we understand, <laughs> not partaken personally, have you been? My in-laws might. That's right. For their yeah. anniversary. And I don't remember my, you know, my mother-in-law wearing a dress. I think she just wore like nice yeah, pants. Yeah, pants. Yeah, like a nice shirt. Pants, suit, or dress. Or yeah, anything. but I think they also went like earlier. It wasn't like dinner, dinner. Right. It was like a little bit I think too, dinner. they put the dress code out there. Like if you come up, and if you show up somewhere close to the dress code. Yeah, they're not going to like turn you away. But right. if you're showing up in like flip-flops, you show like, up in the bikini. pool. Yeah, they're going to be like, get out. Yeah. <laughs> so they're going to be like, please go to the gift shop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, for, I, I kind of understand it because for what you're paying for that meal, mm-hmm. part of it, you're, part of what you're paying for is the experience. And the experience is a little bit diminished if you see people you know, <laughs> sitting around and <laughs> swimming. And it is a triple A five diamond award. Right. It's it's hotel. the I mean restaurant in yeah. a hotel, which I think is crazy. It's so to call it the best restaurant on Disney property would not be a stretch. Um, mm-hmm. We just can't back that up personally. <laughs> no. Nope. We haven't had a chance to eat. Maybe I would like to eat there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like I would one like of the anniversary it. trips or something. Right. Um, I think we have to make it to like a fiftieth anniversary before. <laughs> We're really there, but yeah. <laughs> maybe. And, yeah. and you know, it's it's crazy because Disney has really upped their dining game. Mm-hmm. I would say, and like they the continue last to. 10 years. Yeah, because even like um, at Disney Springs, I keep calling it things on Disney. I, I have to like think about that. <laughs> uh, Disney Springs, there's so many restaurants now with like chefs that everybody knows, and uh, you know, I guess with the like, Top Chef coming out, like, right. all these chefs are getting so much more popular, and they're opening restaurants everywhere, and it's just amazing that how. Disney's kind of incorporating that. And I think that's why they're also kind of upping the games at the, when they do the renovations for the Valley Resorts. Right. So. And for the for the existing restaurants, when they mm-hmm. have, you know, when you have that competition in your marketplace, you kind of have to step it up and do something new and special. Like, oh, you've been serving, um, you know, pretty decent seafood for the last 20 years. Uh, not enough anymore. You've got, right. you know, you've got to kind of go above and beyond. You've got the boathouse mm-hmm. and paddlefish competing with you on your own property that people can take a bus to. They're they're not interested in mediocre. Like you gotta make it awesome. Mm-hmm. So I think that we're gonna continue to see that trend of I think so too. better and better dining. I hope. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I guess do you want to switch gears and talk about the rooms? Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of options there. Uh, you can get you know the standard mm-hmm. room, um, but they also have uh, one bedroom villas, two bedroom villas, and the grand villa. Uh, the Grand Villas sleep up to 12 guests, so if you're traveling with a large party and have some money to spare, <laughs> you could probably reserve a Grand Villa. 
Um, we also have uh, the two bedrooms all sleep nine. The one bedrooms are up to five and they're very much similar to the um, studios except you know you have a separate bedroom area and a separate bath area. Uh, sorry, hold on one second. <laughs> Not yet. Sorry. <laughs> Mom break. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so I don't know. So the grand know. villas yeah. are actually pretty hard to get because I, I believe that they're all through the DVC side. Yes. Um, in, and if that is in fact the case, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I've never had anybody try to reserve one because I don't even want to know how much they, they are. But um, Oh my gosh. Oh, well, speaking of the Victorian Advocacy Horror. Oh, yeah, finish. yeah. That was pretty cool. So he just, if, if you haven't read the comments yet, um, the harpist. Take a scroll through because Howard and Leah have eaten at Victoria and Albert's yeah. very recently. And they said that the harpist that they play, because they do have musicians. So this hotel, like um, in the lobby, they actually have, you know, an orchestra playing sometimes and a pianist playing. And um, so the harpist at Victoria and Albert's uh, learned a song for them. I guess he requested a song and she did not know. She learned what it. What song was it? On break. Yeah, let us know what song it was. <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah. I'm, probably I know, but I don't remember, so. So Grand Villas are, are available at several of the deluxe resorts uh, with the, the sleeping up to 12. Uh, the Treehouse Villas at Saratoga are there, um, are another version of it, but they only sleep up to nine. Um, however, because they are part of the DVC inventory, mm -hmm. they are notoriously tricky to get if you're on a cash reservation because they go pretty quickly. Um, from the DVC inventory, the three bedroom villas and the studios are gone like <laughs> oh, okay. Case. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that leaves kind of the one and two bedroom villas as mostly what's left over for cash reservations or what's actually, you can actually have a decent shot at getting. Um, you really have to be good with your timing in order to get mm -hmm. the three bedroom because the, the, the windows for the DVC reservations are open at 11 months and open at seven months. So the timing for when those three bedroom villas comes out will be a little bit offset from when, like right now we can book all of 2018 on a cash reg a reservation, on, on, you know, just a regular normal Disney World reservation. Um, if I was booking in November for DVC, or let's say October for DVC, I couldn't reserve that until December if I own points at that resort. Mm -hmm. So they're not gonna sell those three bedrooms out in cash reservation before the, the 11 month window opens up. And then I wouldn't be able to reserve until, oh no wait, sorry, I, I do math well, I promise. <laughs> November, I could reserve for October. But if I don't own at that resort, then I'd have to wait until March to reserve for October. So it's it's gonna be a while until those reservations open up. And when you see them, basically you've gotta get them because there are really only a couple of them. Tears for fears, that's awesome. She played that on the harp? Wow, that's pretty cool. I like that song too, by the way. <laughs> And then, this, well, if you get, I guess, any of the villas, right? They all have uh, full kitchens. Do all the villas have full kitchens? The villas do. Yes. Yes. So the one bedroom villa, the two bedroom. I mean, the studio has a has a kitchenette, but you have a microwave, um, and mm -hmm. it's the only way out. Honestly, outside of the family suites at Art of Animation and All Star Music, the only way to get a microwave in your room is to get a villa. Mm -hmm. um, but the downside of the villas is that you have one regular bed and one sofa bed. So depending on your family and who's going with you, that may or may not be ideal for sleeping. Yeah. So. Um, that's the only caveat of that. So, because even in the in the deluxe rooms, there's no microwave in the standard True. rooms. I, however, though, I think if you get a club level room, do you get a microwave in club level? I think in the club. Oh, lounge. in the club lounge. Okay. Yeah. So, like uh, some of the other resorts, because there are microwaves in the food court. Right. You have to resorts. go to the food court to mm -hmm. microwave it. But if you're staying at the club level, um, I don't think you would have to trek all the way to the, to the main dining area. You could just go into the club lounge. Uh, have um, beverages and things like that. Right. And I think there's a microwave in there for you to do. It's just um, crazy to me. Even in the, even in the one and two bedroom rooms, not villas, but the standard rooms that are one and two bedroom, there's still no kitchenette. I know. It, just, it blows my mind, honestly. Like I feel like, like there should people, be a microwave. Kids, you know, yeah. kids. Right. <laughs> you know, like you need to have like a sink that's not a bathroom sink to like wash right. bottles out. Right. It's just sometimes it gets a little gross. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I, I've stated the values and moderates, and I've had to use them to um, all for stages. You know, bottles right. to just even pureed food. Like, right. you know, even if they eat it all, you still gotta clean it up a little bit. Right. And trying to use just a bathroom type sink is yeah. not the best thing ever. Yeah. And you, you like to have that little, you know, the bigger thing. So yeah. everything could just go down there. And, and I like. Out. I mean, we usually pack breakfast so that mm -hmm. we can eat quickly and then get out the door to the parks. 
well, I've kind of gotten attached to having oatmeal for breakfast, but I've forgotten on occasion and booked a regular room at, at a resort instead of a DVC room, and, and like all of a sudden I'm like, where am I going to I don't have a microwave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there goes the oatmeal. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. it's just, I mean, it's one of the things that I do kind of wish that Disney had, and honestly, I wish they were in every room, but I mean, at least I could see that as like, okay, this is a reason for you to book a deluxe because that microwave will save you money on food. Yeah, I was actually surprised by that because I uh, I have yet to stay at a deluxe and I will be staying, um, my next two trips are for deluxe ones. <laughs> Yay! And then I was like, wait, but there's no microwave. So yeah. The first one. The next one I made sure that it didn't have a microwave. So, I made yeah. a microwave for at least one of them. Um, but I, I was very happy that we got um, a free upgrade last time we were at the Art of Animation because I was able to be And then you got attached to the microwave. Not, yes. <laughs> You're like, now I'm going to be like really disappointed. There's not going to be like a little sink and a microwave. <laughs> so I keep saying that every time we go. Like the nicer stuff we say, I'm not going to get spoiled. Right. Oh, it, it happens. It happens for sure. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, you I have to stay out. where? Yeah. Really <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're all great. It doesn't matter. They really are. They yeah. Really are. But yeah, sometimes you are just like, ah, oh, man. I just want that one extra thing. Yeah. Um, the, um, the other mm-hmm. thing that I really like, I'm going to go back to that uh, DVC room real quick. Um, for Sorry, I'm just studying the floor plan here to see if anything's different than uh, than it is at the others. I don't see it specifically listed, but DVC one bedroom typically has a jacuzzi tub in the room. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, you can book in the villas on a cash reservation. So you can yeah. get, and the one bedrooms are one of the last things typically to sell out so it's a pretty easy switch like instead of doing a one bedroom room if you do a one bedroom villa then you have the option to get the microwave and the kitchen sink and have possibly i would have to double check your floor reading because i don't see it specifically in the in the schematic but oh i know what you're um, talking about to get the yeah. jacuzzi tub now it's not like a, it's not like a hot tub in room it's a you know a bathtub with a whirlpool jet which actually would be very which nice on a race weekend walking. it'd be amazing yeah it's it's really not really even nice. a race weekend yeah. If you're just like those the type of people that love like just yeah. hanging out things at the park and just walking everywhere mm-hmm. and getting as much as it's you can. It's just nice to it. get home and it's, be like, oh, look, my feet. <laughs> I have a nice place to rest. Because I usually <laughs> do that anyway. I fill the tub, uh, whichever room we're in, I uh, actually fill it with cold water uh, to put my feet in there first. And then uh, give my muscles a little bit of shock. Yeah. <laughs> so like before relaxing them. Um, and it's always nice to do that. So yeah, I th- that's actually a great idea um, if you're going for a race weekend to splurge a little bit on the right. room uh, because you are going to be on lack of sleep and you're going to be running a lot. And then I'm right. sure you're going to want to check out a park. So having a little bit of comfort. Having a very comfortable place to come back to. Is, comfortable is, bed. It's key. And uh, if you have like a nice tub, that's so great to do. Grand Floridian mm-hmm. might be a great spot for that. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yep. There is, did we, we said club level? There, I did. You mentioned something about mentioned club in particular. Um, oh, I was saying there probably is a microwave in there. Oh, great, great. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're not familiar with club level, uh, staying club level gives you concierge service, uh, which means that you have access to the concierge lounge, mm-hmm. uh, which gives you free snacks. Soda. And, I mean, not, yeah. we're not talking like Mickey bars, but, but mm-hmm. you know, whatever they have available that day, you know, fresh mm-hmm. fruit, um, you can get some cereal in there in the morning. Yeah, and I think it's too late. Um, like if you're used to buying the cups, the refillable mugs, mm-hmm. you might not need to buy the refillable mugs right. because you're going to have access to um, uh, beverages, uh, sodas and water and things like that um, that you would be anyway refilling your mug with. So you wouldn't have to spend the extra money just to get the mug because you've already spent the extra money to stay at the club right. level, so you have access to that. And there are club level rooms at all of the deluxe resorts mm-hmm. and even some of the moderates are now starting to get in on that action. Um, Coronado Springs has the Casitas section, um, although right now Coronado Springs, everything, all, yeah, all amenities are in flux over there, so. And Caribbean Beach. Yeah. And Caribbean Beach. Beach. I mean, they're yeah, they're really they, they're really just bulldozed buildings at Caribbean yeah. Beach. They're just sitting in a pile of building remnants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of sad looking. Like, you can still see, yeah. like, pieces of roofs. Yeah. So, it, everything, everything that we've said on any previous show about Caribbean Beach or Coronado like, we'll probably be take with a grain of salt we, do this. Right. we have no yeah. idea if those, if those amenities and, and um, characteristics are going to stay when the mm-hmm. when everything shakes out over there mm-hmm. um, so. let's see uh, oh recreation so yes. recreation so obviously there's pools there's a mm-hmm. water slide I did Amy I got the stack <laughs> it's a 181 foot long water slide 
Then I was like, wait, is that the longest Which one's one? the longest? Yeah, so I looked it up. The Yacht Club has the longest. And Yacht, Yacht and Beach, because they share. Yes. So. so that one is 230 feet long. Boardwalk has a 200-foot one. Then it's Grand Floridian, which is oh, 181. Third place. Third yeah, place. Bronze medal. Then Contemporary at 144. Uh, Polynesian at 142. And then it's Wilderness Lodge at 67. So it kind of it drops pretty pretty low there. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, if you're in Animal Kingdom wasn't in that, uh, wasn't in the mix anywhere. Mm-mm. Wow. Not on this list. That's interesting, because I thought the, the uh, Uzima pool up oh, okay. had a pretty good... And this one was updated, because it has Bay Lake Tower. Right. right. Actually, uh, Bay Lake is 148. It's a little bit longer. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there is water slide. Um, most of, all, all the resorts have, like, a water slide. Most of them. Right. Uh, except Modern for the values. But the values have very cute character-themed pools. Right. So, you kind of get... So, I mean, it's still a nice pool. It's, it's not, mm-hmm. I, you just don't have a slide. Exactly. And honestly, for me, I, I, as an adult, the water slide has become more important to me because mm-hmm. I feel like when I go to a pool now, I just like, you can't swim back and forth because there are kids everywhere. So mm-hmm. you, you run into you them. Into right? I mean, they run into you because they're not watching where they're going. I mean, yeah. You can swim in a straight line, but they don't, they don't, they can't see that trajectory. So True. you're getting hit. <laughs> so, I mean, really, like, what's there to do besides stand around in the pool? And just rest in the water. Yeah. Like I like the water slide because and it's a little there, more there's always a hot tub too. But again, it's Florida. Do you want right. to be in a hot tub? No. <laughs> again, after race weekend, probably. Right. But, but that's about it. you don't really want to be in hot water. What is that? Although it does make it feel cooler when you get out of the hot tub. It does. You're like, oh, it only feels like it's 97 degrees. And the hot <laughs> tubs are good if you're visiting in the fall or in yeah. the winter time. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so the the pools are always very nice. Um, and they have very similar. Uh, recreation activities that they do, for example, at Riverside, anywhere where there's water. Um, they do have boat rides, they have um, water sports, um, fishing. You can do fishing. There is a beach there. Of course, that was in the news for a while. So now they right. actually um, put up signage and they, they put up a, it's not really a fence, it's more like a It's little, a rock wall. Yeah, and then they have like a little rope kind of thing. Yeah, so. thing on there. Um, so it's not super obstructive of the view. Right. But I really um, wouldn't worry about my safety on that beach. Like, I, mm-hmm. and honestly, it's, it's, it's secured enough. It's, it's a good natural barrier. Um, yeah. It, I mean, you still I mean, have to, it's, you should yeah. always be vigilant anywhere. There's yeah. water. There can be an alligator or a snake. I mean, it's just, I grew up in Florida. Yeah. I do not do it. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, if there's natural water in Florida, you just don't touch it because it's mm-hmm. gross. Like not just, the, not just, not just things that will eat you, but. Like yeah. bacteria, brain eating amoebas. Like Stuff. no, don't don't touch it. It's gross. Stuff. That's, that's why the ocean's there. Right. Go to the beach. <laughs> yeah. Or go swim. That's why they have like twelve pools at every resort. Go swim in one. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to get in that nasty. Yeah, and they do. And they do have. Um, I think they still have. They have the little. Uh, they have the, like the little boats that you can rent, like the two. Yeah, the little paddle boat. Uh, they have paddle boats, but they have like the little motorized ones. Oh, like, okay. Tiny ones. Yeah. Um, and I thought that they still had. Um, I forget what it's called. When they drag you on the boat on the big, um, parasailing, no, or jet, or um, water ski, where you're sitting on a big inner tube, which I always thought was oh, kind of freaky like because, because yeah, because yeah, because like you might fall off. Well, but the lake water is in there. splashing you. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't even like the idea of the jet skis because like your feet are down close to the water. Like the water's gonna come up and splash you. It's not like I need clear water. Yeah. And it's I need to see what's down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But they do have jet skis, um, they do have fishing, and then they do have, um, which you can get to, even if you're not staying there, they have the uh, little pirate cruises, oh, right. um, and then they have the nighttime fireworks cruises, if mm-hmm. you want to see the fireworks from the water, like at Magic Kingdom from the water. Um, if, and if you're at Grand Floridian, you can see the fireworks. Uh, you won't be able to see... The uh, view's skewed, like yeah. it is at the Contemporary. It's not as dead on as it is at Polynesian. Right, but, but you if, can't see, like, you know, the projections on the right. castle. But you're closer to them also, yeah. because the Polynesian is the only resort that has a dead-on view, but the castle is, like, this big in the distance <laughs> with the fireworks going off over top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but all three of the resorts do pipe in the music at some location so that you can stay at the resort and see the fireworks mm-hmm. if you're on the And they road. still do um, <clears throat> the movies at night, um, just like all the other resorts. So that's kind of fun if you, if you have, like, a day off mm-hmm. where you're not going to a park and you just want to hang out at the hotel. There's always, um, and they always provide popcorn, too, by the way, right. if you're going to watch those. Um, um, let's see. Pontoon boat. Transportation. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Transportation is um, well. It's always a thing that's good to research before you go because Disney has a lot of little shortcuts if you know how to use them to your advantage. Mm-hmm. So of course the Grand Floridian is on the monorail loop, and it also has boat access to the Magic Kingdom. 
Um, important things to note about this are if you're on the monorail loop, you're the first stop. Magic Kingdom will be your first stop. So it's very efficient transportation to get to the Magic Kingdom. You don't want to take that monorail on the way home, though, because you've got to stop everywhere else before you get back. However, the boat launch goes directly to Grand Floridian before it goes to Polynesian and then back, and it runs that triangle. So you want a monorail in the morning and boat at night if you're looking for the most efficient use mm -hmm. of transportation. If you're looking at your transportation as another ride of your day, then you want a boat in the morning and monorail at night. It's just whatever, you know, whatever floats your, floats your boat. <laughs> <laughs> or runs your monorail. <laughs> <laughs> um, navigating to other resorts. Uh, Grand Floridian is among the resorts that it is fairly simple to navigate to other places. Mm -hmm. um, you would usually use the transportation, or the, uh, where, am I, where am I going? You would usually use the Magic Kingdom as a transfer point. Uh, because you can also pick up a boat at that point to go to Wilderness Lodge, the Contemporary, or Fort Wilderness, and that boat runs on a loop. So Magic Kingdom becomes a really good transfer point um, for you to access all of the other resorts by boat that you can't get to by monorail. You can also, if Magic Kingdom is super, super crowded, <laughs> um, one of the only places in the park that you can go uh, resort to resort is that Contemporary Wilderness Lodge, Fort Wilderness Loop. So you can monorail to the contemporary, go down to the boat dock, and then get into that loop. So pretty user-friendly to get back and forth to the other resorts. And of course, you can walk from the Grand Floridian to the Polynesian. Yeah. Um, and there's never, I mean, a lot of times people, um, especially if you're going for the first time to Disney, will kind of stick to your resort because you want to check out your own resort. Right. Um, and then just go to the parks. But it is kind of nice to try to make reservations at other resorts. Um, Absolutely. Especially if you're... If you know that for a fact you, you probably won't be returning to Disney mm -hmm. for a few years in between your vacations, um, you know, maybe booking a dining reservation at Wilderness mm -hmm. and then doing the luau at, at right. Polynesian one night, you know, just to see what else is out there, options, and then kind of preparing yourself. Like, next time you're like, this might be what, a place right. I want to check out. So. And it gives you a completely different theme. Like, it's going to make your meals special. It's going to make them stand out because each one is going to be very, very different from the others. Correct. So instead of having, like, okay, we went to Narcosis and Citricos and Victoria and Albert's and 1900 Park Fair, like, yay, we have <laughs> hit every restaurant in the Grand California, or Grand Floridian. Every time, every time, I can't stop it. Yeah. Okay, Grand Floridian <laughs> is what we're talking about today. Um, so it gives you that, you know, well, okay, we're going to go over and have a, you know, a rustic meal over at the Whispering mm -hmm. Canyon Cafe, or, you know, we're going to go to the Hoopty Doo Musical Review and get a dinner show, or Spirit of Aloha, like you said, and get a luau. I mean, it gives you a lot of really great options. Mm -hmm. um, another feature that Grand Flor Floridian, Floridian mm -hmm. has <laughs> is the Wedding Pavilion. Um, technically, it's located at Grand Floridian. Realistically, physically, it's, it's um, probably about a third of the way to the Polynesian from the Grand Floridian. Mm -hmm. um, Grand Floridian is an amazing place if you're going to have a wedding, do a destination wedding, and stay for your honeymoon. It's a really awesome way to really treat yourself to a nice experience, mm -hmm. um, whether you do parks or not, just as a resort. <laughs> like, we've listed all these amenities every single week, um, especially at the deluxe resorts with the you know extended water activities and things like that. Um, there's, there's nothing that says that you have to go to Disney and go to parks. Like, these are fantastic standalone resorts all by themselves. So you can go and have a really awesome vacation. Yeah, that's actually a good and recommendation for people who have annual passes or for people or visitors. Um, you know, sometimes you, you feel like kind of obligated right. to go to the park. And sometimes it's hard because you're there and you're like, but the yeah. park is over there. Yeah, but it's like, you know, after a while. We're trying it in October, I, I think. That's what we're going to do. Last night we were talking about whether or not yeah. we should buy tickets. But <laughs> I think right yeah. now we're doing, uh, we're doing a resort only. But oh, nice. We'll yeah, see. We'll it's see actually a happens. funny experience. Like you know, it, it, like I said, if you have like an off day, if you're planning a trip and you're going for a week, and you know you have a day or two where you're not planning, or take a, a day or two. Like yeah. force there to be a day. Just yeah, for, I mean, just we we thing. did that. We hopped in the little the boat in between um, mm -hmm. wilderness, and we weren't even thinking. We yeah. were staying in our renovation, and we just took the bus to like yeah. We went to the Magic Kingdom, and then we right. took the boat, and then we went to the just for fun. Yeah, just for yeah. fun, and. Uh, it was kind of nice to see the resorts, and that's how we figured out we wanted to stay at Wilderness. Right. We were like, this place is pretty cool. Like, so. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll both be live streaming from there um, in the next couple of months. So, so yeah. look for those on our page, too. Oh, and Jess said there's a one-mile running walking path between Grand Floridian and Polynesian. Mm -hmm. yep. So if you're training, or if you just want to get out and enjoy the the outdoors for a little bit, take a walk, um, especially and after... 
some of the dynamics. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Like if you just went to the uh, spirit of Aloha dinner, you need a little. I think it's one of the nicer paths too, just mm-hmm. as um, just because of the scenery on it. As it changes from the Grand Floridian to the Polynesian, you go right by the spirit of Aloha dinner show, uh, and you're kind of running right along the edge of the lagoon, um, not close enough to get eaten by anything, but you know, <laughs> but. Uh, you're you're kind of right there. Um, you know, you can see the Magic Kingdom across the way. It's it's a very picturesque um, trail. Uh, that one and the one between the Wilderness Lodge and um, Fort Wilderness. I think yeah. are probably my two favorites. Although that one, I don't I don't think I'd run again without a buddy because yeah, it was it's very woodsy. Yeah, and like, you don't want to do it like late in the day. It's a little desolate there. there. <laughs> Running back, it's like starting to get dark. Yeah, no. kind of gets a little scary. Right, take a friend for yeah. sure and a flashlight. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I like. I was fortunate. I only saw deer and rabbits, but there are definitely other things that live there. <laughs> yeah, so. and it is Florida. So you want to have the bug spray handy. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Cool. Uh, is there anything else we neglected to cover about mm-hmm. the Grand Florida? Like, oh, there is a spa on site. Fitness center. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the Census Spa. Um, some of the I think Coronado also has a spa uh, on property. Yes, Sarah so, does also. Yeah. So if you, um, you know, after walking all day, need a massage, there's options there. Um, you know, and they have a full service spa, so you can get your hair done, uh, nails, massage, uh, facials, all that kind of stuff. So um, if you want to do that, you can reserve that as well. And not leave your resort there. Um, I think that was it. I think we had everything. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody has any more uh, tips or hints, if you've stayed there and you want to. Add them to the comments. Add them to the we'll comments. More than happy to read them. I'm sure. Yep. Uh, feel free to do so. Um, the video and last week's will be up on YouTube shortly. <laughs> and <laughs> next week, um, hopefully, I'll be talking with someone um, <laughs> because I'm pretty sure Ben is abandoning me, and I think everybody else yeah. is afraid to come on because it's supposed to be Paradise Pier and Good Neighbor Hotels at Disneyland. <laughs> so that's what's on the schedule, but we might mm-hmm. edit the schedule okay. just so that. Um, Someone will talk with me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we have some ideas yeah. uh, about rides and things yeah. that we can do this summer. So. Right. So we might yeah. do. We might take a resort break. This is our last resort for Walt Disney World for now, mm-hmm. um, and that was going to be our last one for Disneyland. Okay. And then we were on to cruise ships and and things like that. So Ooh, Leah had a Manny Petty at Census. Oh, that's awesome. And it was awesome. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. I've always wanted to try. It. I always say after one of the races that I was going to go to the spa and. I never do. I just sleep. <laughs> I end up passing out. And then we're going. When you wake up, you're like, oh, parks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's going to do it for us tonight, guys. Thanks for joining us for our review of the Grand uh, Floridian. Yes. Floridian. Floridian. See, it's getting late. I'm like, right now, my brain's not working anymore. So, have anyway, a great thanks weekend. for tuning in. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>